Chapter 2, What is Love? Before long, as the story goes, a few of them decided to take on that experience and made it seem as if, only he could guide them there. One person was Livia, who was married to one of his friends, Kimya, and a female friend named Nene. Livia was a much older woman with a seductive spirit who tried to convince Dasinga that Nene would be his perfect wife for him. All three of his friends persuaded Dasinga to go on this adventure with them. Dasinga knew Livia had manipulated his friend into marrying her. He saw her manipulative spirit as she was caught on numerous occasions, still dealing with her exes while still dating his friend, but he kept it to himself. Livia continuously tried to convince him to date Nene and wanted her to seduce him, but it failed. One, she was a very masculine lady, and two, he didn't even find her remotely attractive, he thought of her as only a friend, and that was it. And I might add, that Dasinga was about 21 at the time and he grew up around other cultures as a child because his mother traveled a lot from state to state, again, because she worked for the armed forces, therefore, he wasn't no feeble-minded young man. He wasn't no angel, but noticed he was surrounded by people pleaser, and that was just not his thing. He simply let people live their lives, and he wasn't judgmental because of his upbringing, he wasn't an easy person to manipulate either. To Dasinga, Shreveport seemed to have worsened as time passed, and his hatred for the city deepened. Livia saw this and she eventually convinced Dasinga that she truly loved his friend and was now on the path of righteousness, fighting for Sabaoth. Mamaline paused, enlightenment wasn't available back then, it only began during Wanyanyekavu's time. Back then, people went to church every Saturday or Sunday. Many ill-will people crept in and destroyed many who believed in Sabaoth, they started calling themselves preachers, ministers, and the likes, so he believed they were his friends. Atlanta, Georgia, was one of the many places he had been while in the military. So, they suggested he take them there. The agreement was that they would travel there and work together until they could move on their own, but once they got there, it was something else. That night Sabaoth showed him a dream that they would leave him there stranded. He confronted them the next day about the dream. Livia smiled with her eyes aglow, she said, and I quote, Baby, I would never do that to you. We love you. So that evening, after a long day of searching for work, he returned to where they stayed, and they had indeed left him there, stranded. They never thought Dasinga was qualified to be with them because he had his own way of thinking and served Sabaoth the way he knew him, not the way they did, for they were religious, and he was spiritual. So, they left him. Mamaline turned to Kush, son, as you know, Sabaoth looks at the heart, and man looks at the so-called outward sins, but they never look at the inward sins that corrupt the heart, because for one thing, we can't. Kush looked at Mamaline, what do you mean? Dasinga smoked and drank, but his heart was pure, Livia used to do things of that nature plus, she was a reformed prostitute at that, but after her salvation, she only changed her outward appearance but used her gifts as a manipulator. She used seduction and was narcissistic toward everyone, even her children. Grooming everyone she taught to be that same way, Dasinga admired Livia because she spoke with power when it came to Sabaoth, but he was young, naive, and trusting. Later he realized, she was just imitating or mimicking prophetess Akelamalek. However, amid his trials and tribulations, Sabaoth showed him favor in many ways, even to his amazement. Determined to achieve his goals, no matter what, and Sabaoth made it, where he could do just that, but he did endure great trials and tribulations in the process. He met many celebrities that he admired growing up and they gave him advice. They saw his determination, some took advantage of him and his gift, and some nurtured it. He was homeless countless times, but he didn't care and made do with what he had. Eventually, he sold drugs, another popular thing in those times. It wasn't his type of thing, but he had to eat and needed a place to sleep, which cost money. There were many drugs introduced at this time. They had this one drug called ecstasy, used in dance clubs or during sex, and a few others like methamphetamine or simply meth. Most were euphoric or aphrodisiac drugs, but the one drug popular with our people during this time was crack cocaine. Crack was a drug introduced to our people to get rid of us, and it was shipped into the country by our country and hand-delivered to our communities, like alcohol, was hand-delivered to the Native Americans. 
It became a pandemic to our people, until Sabaoth presented opioids to theirs. Our pandemic had people selling their life's possessions for a little white rock that cost five to ten dollars. It had sons prostituting their mothers and daughters killing their fathers, just for a two-second high, and believe you me, they wanted more. Crack had been around for at least ten years and he never thought about it, he heard horror stories about its effect on people, but he never thought he would ever be involved with it. When he was right in the middle, of it all.